Salam and good morning everyone. My name is Ariba Khan and I'm a junior at Ursuline here in Wilmington, Delaware. So before I jump in and discuss why I wear the hijab and my wonderful experience at Ursuline, I'll tell you a little I'll tell you all a little about myself. I was born in Newark and my favorite sport is tennis. I play second singles on the varsity team. I'm a model UN enthusiast. I'm club president and I've participated in it since the seventh grade. And in my free time I like to read hang out with my friends, travel, and of course, Netflix. Um, as it is my junior year, the most stressful year of high school, SATs and school are right now my top priority. So I come from a practicing Muslim family that values hard work and moral values. I was taught from a young age to treat all people regardless of their skin color, gender, or religion with kindness and respect, to always do the right thing and to always help someone in need the same moral values that are shared by both Christians and Muslims. So growing up in Delaware as a Muslim girl, I always felt like there was something missing inside of me, like I was incomplete. I felt like my faith wasn't as strong as it could be. I felt like, I felt as though I could improve myself to be a better person overall. So I started researching what the hijab was. I read countless articles on what the hijab was and why Muslim women wear it. I even talked to girls and women who wear it. So I'll tell you what the hijab is and why Muslim women wear it. The hijab is a head covering adorned by Muslim women and even Orthodox Christian, Jewish, and Hindu women. It is a form of modesty, liberation, and feminism. And in my opinion, a hijab is a crown that honors women. Um, one of the most important things regarding hijab is that it is completely and 100% a choice. Uh, you can't force someone to wear it. Most people, when they ask me about the hijab, they say, oh, did your parents force you to wear it? And I say to them, no, they did not. I chose to wear the hijab when I was only 12 years old, and I still remember that day like it was yesterday. Um, both my mom and my dad said that um, if I ever wanted to take it off, that I could, that they never wanted me to feel pressure to wear it, and that it's completely up to me, and they would support me. And I'm really thankful I have, fam I have parents who reflect the true values of Islam and our understanding. So the hijab, as I said before, represents three important values, modesty, liberation, and feminism. Modesty is one of the core pillars of Islam, and wearing the hijab is or can be a form of modesty. However, the hijab is more than just a piece of cloth on my head. It is, um, it is the way I talk, the way I walk, um, the way I interact with people, it is the very way I carry myself out in all my actions. So, my hijab forces people to overlook my physical qualities and focus on the person inside of me. Um, to get to know the person inside, that's not to say that a woman who doesn't wear the hijab um, should be treated with any less dignity or honor that a hijab wearing woman receives. I believe that all women uphold the right to receive respect honor and equality regardless of what they wear or what they believe in. The hijab is my choice on what I want to wear and if a woman chooses not to wear the hijab then that is her choice and she must be equally respected. The second point of hijab is that it is a liberation from society's unrealistic standards of body image and male scrutiny. Islam believes that a woman should is to be judged by her virtuous character and actions not by her physical attraction. And when I wear the hijab, I feel as though it liberates me from society's unrealistic standards of beauty. It liberates me from being seen as an object or a symbol, and rather a person. Some people, however, believe that the hijab is an oppression and, and not a liberation. When they think of the word oppression, the first thing that comes to mind is a fully clothed woman from head to toe, and they associate a uh, woman who is showing her skin as liberated. The liberation that comes from the hijab is the choice to wear it. If a woman chooses not to wear the hijab, then that is her choice, and she must be equally respected. And as I said before, if a woman does choose to wear the hijab, then that's her choice, and she must be respected for it. There are pl plenty of Muslim women who are great Muslims and don't wear the hijab, and that's fine. Wearing the hijab doesn't make you a better Muslim or like, you know, just because I wear it doesn't mean that I'm a better person, but rather it's my actions that make me a person that's what should be judged. So in Islam, hijab is prescribed as something you should do, 
but it also says it in the Bible in Corinthians to cover your hair or shave it. But at the same time, no one on this earth, not your mom, not your dad, not your sister, or your brother, can force you to wear the hijab um, or do anything against your will. To have the freedom to choose what you want to wear, to believe what you want to believe, and to be who you want to be, that to me is feminism. And my choice to wear the hijab, to be a Muslim American, and to God willing become a lawyer one day, that is my choice, and there's nothing more feminist than that. For most Americans like myself, wearing the hijab at times can be hard, especially in the rise of Islamophobia. So Islamophobia is the discrimination against Muslims, it's the hatred, you know. So my first experience of Islamophobia was actually on the first day of fifth grade. And I wasn't wearing my hijab. Um, so it, it, it didn't happen at Ursuline, it happened at a different school. So as I proudly wore my uniform, a navy blue polo, a kilt, a plaid headband, I introduced myself to the class by including my cultural background as Pakistani, when a girl in my class screamed terrorist while pointing her finger at me. My 10 year old self didn't even know what the word terrorist meant. I looked to my teacher, you know, who thankfully stepped in and she resolved the issue. That was the first time I ever like experienced Islamophobia. I never had that face that discrimination before. And the fact that I, someone called me that, even though I wasn't wearing a job, it was my first day. I hadn't even met this girl before. I was just <clears throat> Pakistani that, you know, that was the only thing that made me different. So that was, um, yeah. So, yeah, so you can imagine how many Muslim girls and women, women would feel when they actually do wear the hijab, when they are the ones who are easily spotted in public spaces like the grocery store or the mall or the workplace. Luckily for me, the response overall I get in public has been good. People do treat me with respect and kindness, but I have experienced hatred from people from the occasional dirty look, which I'll re respond to with a smile, or um, being cursed at effing Muslims and getting the finger. Islamophobia is a real thing that many Muslims, including myself, experience. Some people think that it's just a Muslim person's problem or a black person's problem when it comes to discrimination, but that's not true. When the rights and liberties of one individual are being threatened, the rights of all individuals are being threatened. My choice to wear the hijab is my choice and it's protected by the constitution. But with the rise of Islamophobia in our communities and in our country, people fail to realize that innocent Muslims, especially women adorned with the hijab, who as I said before, are easily spotted in the grocery store or the malls, they, they face harassment, torment, or even assault. When walking alone at night or visiting a new place, there is a part of me that worries what happens if someone attacks me verbally or physically. There have been accounts of Muslim girls and women across the United States who have had their hijabs ripped off on their way to school and work. However, there are many people around the country who know that Muslims are not terrorists, we're just normal people. And that faith that I have so strongly is restored by my wonderful experience at Ursuline. So you're probably wondering, what's a Muslim doing in an all-girls Catholic school? <laughs> so first off, academically, Ursuline is one of the best schools in the nation. That is truly college prep. The values that are so heavily incorporated into not only in Ursuline's curriculum, but environment is one of the reasons why I chose Ursuline. I remember how scared I was on the first day. Um, the thought of being in an all-girls school t like terrified me. I was scared it was going to be a school full of mean girls and I was going to be eaten alive <laughs> and it would be horrible, but boy was I wrong. Um, it was nothing like what you saw in the movies. Um, I was embraced with, um, you know, I was embraced and welcomed with open arms and kindness. And, you know, so my friends would ask me questions about the hijab and Islam and they would be impressed by my answers. They would all support me wearing the hijab and so much so that you want to know what I get for my birthday and Christmas? Scarves. Flowers and flowers and beautiful scarves, and I love it. So, with this strong sisterhood and openness, I feel as though Ursuline truly represents the values our country should have. Not one person at Ursuline has ever made me feel like a minority or has discriminated against me. And that, to me, is seriously one of the reasons why I love Ursuline so much. 
We laugh together, we cry together, we support each other no matter what. And most importantly, we're there for each other and, and approach each other with no judgment. And that bond we Ursuline girls share so strongly is a bond that Muslims, Christians, Jews, Hindus, and whatever religion, race, or gender should have. Thank you.